So we got a question and we really haven't answered religiosity and sexual expression. So the question was, can I be sexual or like sex and be a Christian? And I would say we can say Christian, Muslim, any religion. Good Jew, like whatever. The Hindus and no. Buddhists don't seem to have too many problems with sexuality. Well, it's easier if you drop the religion. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you read scripture, right? And I have. I was raised as a Christian fundamentalist and have committed to memory chapters, whole passages of the Bible. So I I feel pretty confident in my assessment. God created man in His image. That's the first problem. That, that, that's the first <laughs> mistake he made. <laughs> so that means God either has a penis or a clitoris, or both. Neither. Well, I would hope, well, I shouldn't say hope. I would imagine that God would be a woman giving birth, fertility. Well, anyway, God made you, if you believe in God, with a clitoris or a penis. So why do you have a sex organ that exists solely for pleasure? Why do you have a clitoris? Why do you have the sex drive, the instinct? To better worship the Lord, she says, with tongue in cheek. <laughs> why can't we have pleasure in our lives? Why is that against religion? It, it should never be, it, it, uh, it's, it's the way we control a large mass of people. The church is very smart. Well, Pro organized religion. We're not or, talking yeah. about spirituality and God and <laughs> Organized religion figured it out very early on. The Catholic Church is the best example. Figured out that if you prohibit something like food or sex, they got you by the short hair. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> You'll pay more, right? You'll put more in the collection plate. Yeah. What you know, sex is the only reason we're here. It's an instinct. It's a biological drive. So, like I said, if God created us in His image, why wouldn't He want us to have pleasure in our lives? Why can't we be happy and grounded and connected to ourselves and others? It doesn't make sense that we have to be uncomfortable or unhappy. I didn't ever buy into it. No, the whole guilt and shame thing. It, there's no uh, purpose. There's no function to it. Other than control. Exactly. So if people want you to tithe more and people want to spend all your time trying not to do things, I'd rather spend my time enjoying yourself doing what you want to do. And then connecting to my fellow man. I mean, if you look at the tenets of the Ten Commandments or the Bible, it's always it's love. All over the Bible is love. It says love yourself like your neighbor. Love, 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 love. <laughs> and it doesn't say anywhere not to masturbate. It doesn't mention homosexuality. It never says that women are less than men. <laughs> I mean, it never says that people are color. I mean, it says Jesus had hair of wool and skin of bronze. So if, if you take the literal Bible, if you believe that's God's word. Uh... I just can't even get into it. I, I can't even go there. I just, I never had any of that in my upbringing. First of all, my mother wasn't she didn't read. She could barely read and write. And she was just a little farm girl, but she was smart. Well, we were talking about that, how we ended up in the same place. And that a lot, we're putting together our sex ed curriculum, and I'm really inspired raising a little boy. What you said today about how you're envisioning this. Oh, it's I'm very fabulous. Excited. I love it. I love it. Well, it's going to be the pleasure-based sex education in the Betty Dotson met method, and it's the fundamentals of human development. It was such a profound statement when you said that your mother, Bessie, really planted the seeds of all of this. She, yeah, I mean, if we were, were to, if we were to accredit anyone for this, this education that we're working on, it would be my mother. I mean, and here was a woman that was not educated at all. She barely had a second. Never went to church. Never. <laughs> no. They lived out in the country. It was too far to walk, and, uh, you know, the buggy was always breaking down. Uh, it was just, and she didn't have a mother. I mean, I hate to say, but sometimes a mother is a disadvantage. Uh, she had sisters that sort of, like, paid attention and to her. And she had her instincts. I think if we really dig deep to our humanity, 
we're gonna come back to self-love mm -hmm. and tolerance and kindness and kindness towards ourselves first and pleasure and happiness and joy. I never forget when she said, I said, how come you thought masturbation was okay for kids? And she said, well, I did it when I was a kid. And I went, oh, and and she didn't have anyone around to tell her not to. But that's beautiful because there are plenty of parents who do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. That shows a, a certain amount of fairness and yeah. consideration for others, mindfulness of others. Bessie, I always will love you. So, Can you be religious and like sex? I think not. <laughs> I think so. I feel like you can be spiritual. You know, if Now, you said religious. If you're worried about what people think of you or they say about you or being judged, mm -mm. throw uh, it out the door. You're never going to be happy. And if you read the scriptures, it says, judge not, lest you be judged. Well, I never read that <laughs> that silly Bible. My mother, she said, Betty Ann, I've tried to read it. It's just the most boring thing in the world. And I said, I know I'm not even going to try it. I'm, you know, no, just just be a good person and masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. That's a good one. Be a good person.